Hello and welcome. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. And in this exercise, we are going to be looking at customizing a preset in Particle Illusion. Now, Particle Illusion comes with thousands of free preset emitters for you to have a look at and use in your own projects. But sometimes you might not find the perfect one. In this exercise, we're going to be finding out what you should be looking for in a preset if you're going to make it your own. So let's get started. And back in the Particle Illusion interface, we're going to start off as we so often do by looking at presets. And it's in this case where I want to try to look past what the preset is doing and trying just to look at the motion of it itself. And as normal, let's go to our browse here and we'll start to look for something that's going to be a suitable motion background. I think magic is in the air, so let's have a little look at some of the magical stuff. We've got uh, lots of firework magic. We've got icicles exploding at us. Uh, let's see if we've got a bit of sparkle magic. And we do, we've got quite a few. We've got sparkle magic smoke and sparkle magic burst. Actually, both of these could be quite good for something growing and moving. And as we said before, you know, a top tip about this is that more effort often goes into creating the movement and the flow of a particle than its look. So if we find a particle that has the movement close to what we want, then, you know, I think we should grab that and then start to customize out its look afterwards. So let's go back into our default layout and find our sparkle magic burst. Now, if you're not seeing all of these emitters in your particle illusion, then you just have to go to download the emitters. And we're gonna bring Sparkle Magic's Burst 1 onto the stage by double clicking. And let's move into our edit layout and play that back. Yeah, that's looking kind of interesting here. So we're gonna use this as a base, but swap out all of the elements around it. Uh, let's just come in and do what we often have to do and bring up the zoom. I'm gonna go into the particle itself, the Star Trail 2. And let's just open this up. When we were looking at the steam emitter, we had two elements that made that up. We have the plume top and the plume bottom. The star trail here looks very different. And that's because this preset is a super emitter. Now I'm not gonna to go too deep into what super emitters are. There's a whole tutorial to have a look at that. But to put it simply, the main emitter creates more emitters that then create particles. So think of it like a factory that makes other factories that makes actual things. And the actual things are our particles, which are as normal down at the bottom. And we can tell this is a super emitter because it's got the F life and the F number. But now you know what a super emitter looks like. So this is made up of two things. We've got the smoke and we've got the trail. If I click on the hamburger menu and go disable on the smoke, we can just isolate out the trail and see what we can do with this. So let's open up the properties and start to swap a few things out. And I'm gonna start by swapping out the shape. Now we know that we don't want this um, small blur star. This isn't very natural or organic. This isn't bringing us back to nature. Uh, so we'll look in nature, I think. Uh, we've got some naturey things here. We've got uh, daisies, uh, leaves. Um, these aren't quite what we're after, so I want a bit more of a cartoony look. So let's go and have a look in cartoon. And here we've got a cartoon flower. So this is, this is going to be good. I'm going to hit apply on that. And let's play that through. Let's do what we've done in previous exercises and just limit the workspace to about the first 90 frames. Just to play that back. Yeah, and that's that's certainly something we can start to work with this now. And let's find a frame where things are actually happening, probably around about here. Now you can see here that the colors are looking a little bit strange, and that's because we have intense turned on. Now intense blends those particles that overlap together to give a much more intense and hot feel. This is great for things like explosions and fires, but not so great for, for things like beautiful little flowers. And uh, we can turn the preserve color on to try to, to limit that, but it's still not right. So I'm gonna turn intense off. And let's change those colors up now while we're at it. So I'm gonna come down to my colors 
and go here. And we're back in our color gradient editor. And I want to choose some nice warm colors. So I'll, I'll start with something like a, an orange and I'll get to the next stop and move that to maybe a yellow and create another stop at the end. And we'll turn that mm, to a, a sort of fuchsia, something around about there, maybe not quite as, uh, as bright. And um, actually maybe for good luck, right in the middle here, I'll put a, uh, a cyan, like a pale cyan, pale blue right there. And if we play this back, watch what happens to our colors. Our flowers now are moving between those colors from their birth to their death. And that's because we've got our color type set to full gradient. If I turn this to random gradient and we sort of step through, you can see that each of the particles that are created only have a single color. So the color doesn't change as they get older. And it's just picking a random color from our gradient. If we go next key color, then we're only using the colors that were on the stops here. So we have full control over the colors that are used. Okay, so that's something. Let's uh, turn off the trail now. So I'm gonna do, just disable the trail and let's have a look at our smoke. And we don't really want smoke at all. Smoke does not go with flowers. So I'm gonna change that smoke now. We'll do the same thing, open up properties, go to the shape, come to our cartoon, which is up at the top here, and maybe a leaf. A leaf will go well with the flowers themselves. And as before, we turn off intense because we don't want that building up. We'll come into colors and we'll make these a little bit more leafy. So I'll take one green and maybe a slightly different green, maybe a darker green, a less saturated darker green, maybe. There we go. And this is already on random gradient. So it's picking just any random color. And I, I, I sort of like that. I like what that's doing. And as we play this back, we can see that it's just a random mess of, uh, of leaves at the moment. And we can see that the particle angle is set to random, which means that when these are born, these leaves could be born at any random angle. I can also specify an angle so that everything is set into the same place. This could be really handy for motion graphic work, or I can set this to align to motion. And these will now align to the motion when they were born. And if they're moving in the wrong direction, or they're doing something strange, we can, we can change and offset that angle, maybe to 90 degrees or 180 degrees. Let's have a little look what is going to be best. Yeah, I think 180 is going to be good. And we've got too many, and they're living too long, so I'm going to take the, uh, the life down on the leaves as well. Maybe the number's still too high, so I'll bring that to 0.5, I think. So let's rename the smoke to leaves. Let's rename the trail to flowers, and let's turn that on as well, so enable that. And let's have a look about what we got. Okay, so our leaves are too big. Let's make them smaller. Our flowers are too small. Let's make them bigger. And the only thing I think left that I want to do here is come to my leaves again and give them a bit more weight so they fall. Oh, not <laughs> so they don't fall down that fast. That's falling down a way too, way too fast. So I can give these a weight, maybe two or three. So it means all the leaves are gonna be falling down as gravity gets them. I can also add a bit of weight variation down here. So add a bit of randomness to that weight. So some of the leaves are gonna fall uh, faster or some of them are even gonna go in the negative direction and start floating away a little bit. Now there's a big difference in variation between particle illusion and some of the other particle generator effects you might have encountered. Now, a lot of the other particle generators count their variation or randomness as a percentage of the initial parameter. So if our weight variation was uh, 100 here, in other software, this could mean that our weight would be, you know, plus or minus three. So it could go from zero to six. That's not how it works in particle illusion. 
this weight variation actually adds to the number itself as a, an absolute value rather than a relative percentage value. So this means that our weight variation can go from you know minus 97 to 103. So we've got a huge amount of, as you can see there, whoa, got a huge amount of variation going down there. So oftentimes you'll want just very small numbers just to give us the little bit of randomness that you need without overpowering the effect. And I'm going to just render this one out. Make sure that I choose a codec that supports alpha channels, 444. And make sure I choose RGB plus alpha. I'm going to choose pre-multiplied alpha. And that lovely little ring fills me with lots of joy because it means our render is completed. And let's see how that looks in the edit. There we go. We just brought that in as a nice little transition element one more time. There we go, lovely. And we can do that in the standalone or plugin version. Now, one of the things that we can do exclusively in the plugin version of Particle Illusion is use our layers to drive that emitter. So if we take a look here, we've got the particles exploding from our text. And the way I've done that is to change our emitter to a, uh, an area emitter so that it fits over our text more or less. And then the alpha of the flowers, I've just said, take the alpha from the layer. So what this does now is it only emits flowers where I have some text. If I bring that out over there, you can see it's not emitting anywhere that is transparent. And that's just a little something extra we can do with the plugin version of Particle Illusion. So as we've seen in this exercise, there's a ton of stuff that we can do to take a preset that looks like a magic sparkle and turn it into something that looks completely different. Or with just a few small changes in the parameters. And I hope to show you that the presets themselves aren't always the finished article. You can always use them as they are, but with some very quick changes, they can be completely customized to fit your own project. My name is Ben Brownie from Boris Effects. And thanks for continuing this Particle Illusion journey with me. And if you found this interesting, then check out some of the other Particle Illusion tutorials we have and see what other effects you can start to create yourself. Download Particle Illusion standalone for free at BorisEffects.com, including thousands of free emitter presets. Continue watching this Getting Started tutorial series to learn more about what you can do with Particle Illusion. And find out more about the plugin version of Particle Illusion with extra features, including built-in Mocha Motion tracking, at BorisEffects.com.